Welcome, everyone. I'm Deb Sachs from uh, Go Vermont, and I'm here to make a pre presentation with my partners, Dave Cohen from V Bike and Mary Claire Krogan from Actor. Uh, and we're going to have all modes represented today to talk to you about how to travel more efficiently and uh, some opportunities about how easy it is to access more affordable transportation. So I'm going to begin with a bit of an overview and then we're going to then uh, go to Dave who's going to tell us about an opportunity, uh, a new partnership that we have at Go Vermont called V-Bike. And V-Bike is e-assist, cargo, and all things biking. So it's an exciting area. I'm excited and we even will have a demo uh, uh, as part of this presentation outside where we can see how to ride one of these and how easy it is. So with that, um, we might end up having questions or uh, interest to speak about transit and the opportunity with getting your bike onto uh, an actor bus. Uh, so let's begin with um, Go Vermont and an overview of uh, the services and partnerships that we have. Here on the screen um, is the Connecting Commuters uh, website, and here we have all modes represented, the, uh, from carpooling to van pooling, walking and biking, how to connect in with bus and intercity transit. Um, and I just want to just give you just a brief tour of this and uh, to introduce you to how easy it is to align yourself with someone else that might want to ride together. And um, so uh, here we're looking at uh, the um, Zimride interface. Zimride is our partner who actually has software matching um, to help get people together um, if they're interested in either providing a ride or wanting a ride. Um, so it's a very easy interface um, and here you can sign up and it takes a couple of minutes to sign up uh, by email or a Facebook form where you can actually uh, generate a profile so that, you know, suppose you want to provide a ride. And uh, let me ask uh, your name and where you live. I'm Barbara Clearbridge. I live in Middlebury. Barbara. Okay, so you live in Middlebury. And so say you are working in Burlington and ooh, do you work uh, out I did. of I used to commute several used, days a week. You used to commute several days a week. So that's, that's the sort of thing that we want to do is as Go Vermont and as our partners we look to engaging you and all Vermonters who find the cost of transportation or just transportation in general something that they'd like to do uh, more efficiently. I don't know if you know this, but um, Vermonters drive 7 million million miles a year. That's to Pluto and back and halfway back. That's how many miles we drive. Less than 650,000 of us are putting that many miles on the road. So the whole purpose of Go Vermont is to lower the cost and environmental impact of transportation and we've developed this wonderful clearinghouse and resource to do that. So I've just given you a little bit of a brief tour of this and I'm not going to go deeply into how you actually sign up and whatnot but this represents, this map represents about 4,400 trips uh, that have been posted either they want to ride or they want to drive. And there is where we would match you up with all of those that are going the same place as your schedule. So bringing you back to the main page, um, part of if you get in and come and join the nation of uh, Go Vermont riders and walkers and bikers, um, that if you have, uh, if you are doing a carpool or a van pooling, riding transit, um, doing it at least twice a week, I'm getting into the details here, 
we will give you a guaranteed ride home in the event that your ride needs to leave without you or you need to get home for some reason. So the guaranteed ride home is a one click away. You can fill out a simple form and you, you have to pay for it up front, but we will reimburse you from the state up to $70 for a cab ride home or use of another vehicle. That mileage will be reimbursed up to $70. That's available to anyone that's part of this six times a year. And it's not used that much, but it gives you that insurance blanket, if you will, so that you can do it. Now, coming down here, we can uh, get you to the various bus schedules and bus intercity buses and just linking into the wonderful resources that are um, available to you in that guaranteed ride home. And to get to the, act, the local routes, you simply click on um, inside here, and here we have um, Actor right here, and we get you right to their website where you can then look at the transit uh, routes and, and you're on your way. And here we have Mary Claire who's here to actually be your local expert to get that connection and get you connected to see how easy it is and how affordable it is to ride Actor. I'm being necessarily brief on all of this because there's a lot to go on, a lot to go through, and I want to be sure that we basically get things covered. So we have everything from carpooling, uh, if you looked at the left navigation bar, right on down through, and we even have a vet lift now. Um, so vets can get, you know, can get connected to a volunteer driver. Uh, to get to the VA hospital or their appointments. Um, we have um, uh, design programs to help lower demand and congestion and uh, make things accessible. The Capital Commuters Program is for state employees. It's a, um, it's a we now have 600 employees that are, have accepted the challenge. They're riding for 50% discount on their bus pass and we have uh, great incentives for them to do that um, through our local um, businesses. So with that said, um, that gives you a basic overview of Go Vermont. Our services are free. We will come down and work at a workplace. We will partner up with our transit providers, walk in and help our workplaces understand what kind of services there are so that workplaces right now are experiencing quite a shortage of uh, uh, eligible employees because the unemployment rate is so low and for that reason we we want to make sure that um, we help the business access people and the one thing that I didn't mention was our Vanpool partner VRIDE and VRIDE is about getting many people to a workplace and now we're discovering that some workplaces are so in need of transportation or break down that transportation barrier, we actually are supplying a van, um, running it from a distance from, like, say, Montpelier down to Randolph or Royalton, where an employer is short on people and they now can reach out further to get more people by offering a van pool service, leaving a destination or a center, employment center, to another employment center and uh, they're good to go. And the state of Vermont is very supportive of van pooling and we sponsor and subsidize these van pools uh, at, the, at about $700 a month, reducing the cost to about $100 a month. Um, so when we think about the true cost of transportation, that is about um, $6,000 to $8,000, maybe even more in rural areas to actually own and operate a vehicle that operation of that vehicle, we can lower the cost. What we'd like to see, personally I'd like to see, is to go down to one car families and to use the services that, at Go Vermont to help plug the need for your, your other transportation needs and feel better, healthier, and that you're doing your part for the planet. So we, we even have a nice little table down here, the cost per day, the cost uh, per month and the cost per year. And um, so there's lots of information on this mm. site uh, to really understand the difference between driving alone, a single occupant vehicle over here on the left hand column, 
driving alone, those costs uh, $12,000 for a 100 mile round trip per year to $2,000 if you get into a uh, 12 person van pool. And I'm now going to move over to uh, have Dave talk about how it could be nearly free with just a small investment um, to, uh, to do it another way. So Dave, I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. We're going to see if we can plug this thing together. And oh, we're going to take a commercial break. Commercial break. break. Yeah. All right. So um, uh, just to uh, start off, I, I usually like starting with this particular uh, picture. Yeah, you might recognize this as Manhattan, you know, Queens and Brooklyn and New Jersey. And sometimes when I show this, people think it's like, all those blue dots are all the pizza shops. But that's <laughs> actually all the city bike share um, uh, stalls all throughout uh, the city. And now, you know, all, all over, you know, Brooklyn heading into Queens as well and Long Island City. Um, so this is a multi-million dollar project. Uh, but one of 38 multi-million dollar uh, bike share projects that have been happening in uh, throughout the U.S. And so, you know, the city bike share, I guess I have to hit this thing. Um, the capital bike share, if you've been to D.C., you know, you see them all over the place. Uh, so in 10 years, 38 multi-million dollar projects, the Hubway um, in Boston and Chicago, nice ride in Minneapolis. Wow. Um, I'm not sure why that's... So uh, the uh, bike share programs are really uh, just evidence of what's happening in a lot of uh, cities that um, there's a kind of a, this groundswell of uh, enthusiasm for biking. It's becoming, uh, biking of course, but also walking, it's becoming like the indicator species uh, for healthy communities. But one of the driving factors in this whole thing happens to be uh, the millennial generation. So, you know, why, are, why is all this happening? You know, why are we getting this kind of mobility, uh, these mobility options up and running, particularly, you know, all this biking? Well, millennial generation, they are driving 23% uh, less, 23% uh, miles driven. They're biking way more, they're walking way more, they're taking public transit, they're hanging out on their devices as we know. Um, and a lot of these cities and towns are vying for this population to become economically viable because this is what these people want to be doing. So that's kind of cool. Um, but the big problem is, is that if, you know, if you're part of the older generation, we've tended to think about bicycles as, as mere toys. You know? uh, it's just the way that things happen because there was an amazing bike revolution that happened in the 1890s, extended into the early 1900s, and then the automobile took over, and then the car, and then the bicycle became a toy for. It's a distant, like, uncle or grandfather or. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, then the bike became a toy for adults. You know, so 1970s super light, you know, weight bikes or you know mountain bikes. Um, so our picture of the bike in the U.S. is uh, primarily um, inspired and I'd say colonized by the bike industry and what they've uh, what they've been uh, really promoting. But if you go to Europe, you see something very different. Um, you're starting to see people commute on bikes. But the image of the bike is still uh, vastly all about recreation. You go to a lot of the shops. I just visited a shop down in, um, uh, where was it? I was in Manchester, just to stop over. And not one utilitarian bike in there. It was all toys. Oh. I call it it's a toy store. Oh. I went in to talk to him to let him know about what V-Bike is doing. Uh, and so this is a question I always ask. I, I tend to ask legislators, you know, when they say, oh, we support biking. And I go, so what is a bike? Um, and uh, so one thing that V-Bike is really, and I'll be talking more about V-Bike, is really showing off uh, is uh, the potential for the bike to be so much more. Really going to this next frontier uh, for uh, bicycle transportation. And one of the things that's really kind of uh, picking up steam uh, and has so for the past, uh, I'd say about 
uh, seven, eight years, has been the cargo bike. Uh, there have been articles in all the major newspapers about families ditching the car, moving towards uh, not just sustainable transportation, but connective transportation where we're connected to our communities. It all started with uh, something called the extra cycle. Yeah, it's just uh, this little frame um, that you just put onto a mountain bike and you extend your bike out into a family bicycle. Uh, and ExerCycle came up with this very, very interesting idea of just radically transforming uh, your bike into something else. Um, but now there are a couple of companies, including ExerCycle, there's uh, uh, Yuba Bikes. Um, they put out a line of uh, long tail cargo bikes. And so what this is, it's, these are called long tail cargo bikes because the back is extended out. Um, ExerCycle has now put out their own version so instead of just like an additional frame that you attach onto a mountain bike, these are fully integrated um, uh, frames that um, are much stiffer than just an addition. Yeah, you can bring that over if you like. Yeah. Um, and so what we're, we're seeing all around the country are moms uh, riding these bikes, lots of moms, even pregnant moms. Um, dads, and of course I'm a dad and I ride mine. Are you bringing it right in? Bring it, bring it. <laughs> so we can see it on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, do you wanna do you wanna park it there or yeah, okay, you wanna do it? Let's see if she can do it. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go, yeah. Very easy. Very easy. Wow, you got it right here. Um, now, the, the next stage in this development, we actually have this bike out in uh, the, the display area. This is called the Spicy Curry. Um, it's from Yuba. Uh, it actually has an electric assist that is an integral part of the frame. We just disappeared. Unbelievable. Huh. So, uh, yeah, the Spicy Curry is a really fascinating kind of development in uh, the long tail cargo bikes where now uh, the bikes are now being designed around the electric assist uh, technology which helps uh, families be able to get up hills. Because in Vermont, without something like this, um, there's just, you know, uh, the cargo bike is going to be vastly limited. In places that are flat, you know, it'll work just fine. But if we live in a place with hills, uh, here we go, we're up again. Um, so I was just showing that uh, here's the Yuba spicy curry. We have that out in the display area uh, here at the uh, expo. Uh, this is extra cycle. They also have, and you can see this uh, motor that's mounted right into the frame. That's made by Bosch. They make really nice you know, dishwashers and stuff. But um, uh, they make a really nice electric assist system. And essentially, you're, you're talking about uh, kind of uh, the ultimate hybrid between human power uh, and electric uh, technology. So it's about extending the range, and hill climbing ease, carrying capacity, uh, of biking, and really bringing it into a whole new kind of uh, level. Uh, I think we died again. Oh, uh, there it goes. Right. Why don't you want me to run it for you? Yeah, well, I, there was a video, uh, oh. but I don't think it's going to run because it's, uh, it's not compatible. Yeah, so, you yeah. know. So we'll, we'll do this next part. So uh, as far as electric assist, there's all kinds of possibilities. You can get a special wheel that is, uh, everything's going <laughs> <off> here. <laughs> all right, uh, you can get a, a front hub motor. Uh, so it's basically a wheel that has um, a motor built into it. You want to do that? Yeah. Um, you can have a rear hub motor. Uh, that's a uh, really nice uh, uh, way of getting around as well. Go ahead, next. Or you can have a mid-drive, and those, uh, the Yuba and also the Extra Cycle uh, bikes uh, have mid-drive motors, and those run right off of your chain wheel where you pedal. We actually have one here, so you can uh, take a look at how that works. And you got the next one? Yeah, yeah. And here's a, just a folding bike uh, with a front hub motor. I, I uh, ride one that has a front hub motor. works great. Uh, they all have their uh, advantages and, and drawbacks. Yeah, okay. Next. And uh, you can add on uh, a kit, and then these are all the different kinds of conversion kits. You keep on heading up. Uh, this is the Hilltopper. Um, well, yeah, here we go. The Hilltopper, this is like one of the least expensive kits. You can start off 
at about $500, basically slap it onto your bike and mm. transform your bike. Uh, more complex systems like the Easy or the Bionics, uh, they're essentially what we call plug and play. You know, you can put them on. It takes a little bit more uh, expertise to get the, those particular uh, kits on. You can just hit one more time. So yeah, these are conversion kits. Uh, this is actually one of the newer ones, the uh, mid-drive kits from a company called Bafang. It says eight fun on it, but they're actually known as Bafang. We actually have a Bafang motor right here. It works great. Uh, really great application for seniors. Keep on uh, Give us a few more clicks. Yeah, so um, one of the things we're thinking at V-Bike is really how to get people more active. Uh, and uh, we see this uh, application for seniors as being a great, just one more click, um, uh, a great way to get uh, seniors more active. We have the second oldest population uh, in the United States. And here's all kinds of examples of, um, this is a newer uh, trike that's coming out that has a front hub motor, it's foldable. Um, it's a um, collaboration between two companies, the oldest cargo bike manufacturer in the U.S., Worksman Cycles, and an e-bike company coming mm. together. Uh, so there's a lot of collaborations like this happening uh, with other companies that are building smaller folding cargo bikes. This one over here is actually a combination of a cargo bike company and a folding bike company. Hit it again. Uh, so there's a folding uh, long tail cargo bike. Hmm. Uh, that Exercycle's been working on with um, another company. Uh, the upper tier of this whole thing is, is the ELF, uh, and, uh, something designed by a company in uh, North Carolina called uh, Organic Transit, and they make something called the ELF, which stands for Electric Fun. The L is hmm. electric, the F is for fun, and hmm. give me a couple more clicks. Um, these are um, solar, electric, human-powered vehicles. You can carry your kids. The cargo, uh, it has a solar panel on top, it's got lights, it has directionals. Um, but this also is a symbol for me of where Vermont is and how far behind we are mm -hmm. as far as bike technology and uh, applying uh, the body to our transportation. There is not one elf in all of Vermont. Uh, a lot of people think oh, there should be elves running around with Vermont <laughs> or gnomes. I've seen gnomes, but I've never seen, there's actually not one here. Uh, so it's like, huh. why huh. is that? How have we not um, brought somebody, you know, bought right. one of these? Uh, they've sold, uh, you know, over a thousand of, uh, of these uh, vehicles. I've been watching this kind of thing for years, and this is really the company that's got it down. And so huh. um, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But, you know, again, the ultimate hybrid, using our uh, human power and electric assist. Uh, here's just a really simple battery comparison. Uh, give me a couple more clicks. Uh, yeah, here's a, um, so this is an electric car, a battery bank on the bottom. This is like a Tesla kind of setup for an electric bike. Um, sure. A lot less yeah. resources. So, yeah, so, well, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking <laughs> about. It's like resource comparisons. I don't have to go into like statistics. It's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, even a large cargo bike like this. Uh, you could probably make about a hundred of these just from the resources you, you, you need for a uh, gigantic uh, thing like that. So um, I call it thing like that, but it was an SUV, wasn't it? Yes. That was a, that was a, it was a, a big thing. Um, so um, yeah, let me see if I can just uh, click this. This, okay. little, this might be a little bit easier for me to do. Uh, so uh, one, one of the things I'll go through this this part kind of relatively fast, but uh, I'm just looking at. Uh, the Vermont Comprehensive Energy Plan is no longer a draft. Actually, I thought I updated this, but it's showing it's a draft again. Uh, and so we just came out with this great, you know, this energy plan, which actually has got some very, very key um, uh, goals as far as reducing our energy consumption, as you can see. Um, and, you know, there's you know, all these kinds of uh, energy resources or kind of energy profile for transportation that's included in the plan. Uh, however, there's a weird thing about it. And it's what I call the case of the 625,745 missing human bodies. There's nothing about human power in our transportation energy plan. It's like we've been written out of, uh, of the whole energy um, uh, complexion of what happens out there. You couldn't even turn on these cars and everything else if we didn't have the bodies doing it. 
Uh, but even though it's a, a really, really small sliver, and if you put it in there, it would probably even be smaller than what I added in. I added that in because I, mm. I like to. I think transit like to, riders are excluded from those. Yeah, yeah, those yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, there it is. Yeah, human power. If you don't, if you don't utilize that particular mm -hmm. source, that resource, that abundantly available resource, um, the implications are pretty awful. And we'll, we'll just take a look at that briefly. I just uh, note that in the comprehensive energy plan, there's about uh, three quarters of a page devoted to active transportation, um, mm -hmm. about 20 pages devoted to the um, electric automobile. But, so what are the implications of not using, you know, our bodies and writing out our, ourselves out of our energy plan? Uh, it's pretty clear. Um, Americans gained 25 pounds between 1960 and 2002. As a whole, we've actually grown 25 pounds. Uh, now, that obesity c consumes 1 billion gallons of gas mm. annually, enough to fill 1.7 million cars uh, for an entire year. Wow. It, 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 okay, mind-boggling. Uh, mm. Yeah. Mm. And there's all kinds of also health mm -hmm. uh, issues related to car commuting. Uh, been researched, it's been looked at by uh, uh, many different researchers and universities. Uh, and so, you know, what's happening here is partially that, you know, our whole worldview is getting collapsed into the automobile. How we get around really has a huge impact on how we see the world. Um, and so not only is the, the automobile kind of colonizing our landscapes, mm -hmm. but also colonizes our, our minds and our bodies in certain ways. Uh, and we ended up, ha you know, one thing I kind of realized is like as everybody's driving around, they're having almost the same experience of the interior of the automobile. Um, so we're simplifying our experience of the world. Uh, and it, uh, to me, it's like, a, 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 like the ultimate conformity of our experience by subverting our bodies, our senses, and our emotional connections to the world. Now, I, I had this, this is not going to play, but... Um, we're probably going to put this up on the V-Bike website. This is from the Magnificent Ambersons. It's oh. ama it, it was uh, Orson Welles' second film after he did uh, Citizen Kane. Uh, and it's an this particular part is amazing. So the Magnificent Amberson takes place in like uh, 1906, 1907. Uh, cars, you know, starting to like take over the landscape. Uh, and it was a book written by this guy, Booth Tarkington, who wrote a lot of trashy novels, but this novel was, was quite amazing. Uh, and this is a discussion that's happening uh, with a family, the Ambersons, and an auto magnet who's there visiting. And the discussion is unbelievable. Uh, and at one point, the, the guy who's you know, this car manufacturer has to admit that, you know, 10, 20 years from now, if we see what the automobile does to our inner landscape, you know, he might actually agree with what one of the guests said, but maybe the automobile shouldn't have been invented. And that's not my argument at all, but it's an amazing look at uh, the psychology of the automobile. And this book was written back in 1908, uh, The Magnificent Amberson. So, but it's not going to play. No. In fact, it got stuck. Oh, there, see. You oh, there we go. Oh, all right. So, um, I was going to follow that up with like looking at the uh, kind of the neuropsychology, the sensory psychology of the automobile. Uh, and so I come down hard on the automobile. I sometimes get in the car too. So, uh, but I really want to kind of push the edge of how we look at what's happening to us and uh, the very meaning of the word automobile. And I'll go through this kind of quickly. It's kind of easy to understand that when you're in an automobile, you're kind of severed your relationship to the world around you. You subverted your senses. It's just the, the design, the architecture of the automobile. That's what makes it comfortable. Of course, when I talk about this, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we're kind of severing our relationship with the ecological and social worlds we pass through. It's just part of the nature of, of the automobile. Uh, it also protects us from the very traffic, noise, and kind of pollution that's all around us. So we don't even notice that. I had that experience actually driving this van home uh, last night because I rode to the U-Haul place. And a van just like it passed by me at about 35 miles an hour. And I was just like, like that. 
Uh, then I drove, I put my car in the van once I got the van, I drove back and passed by a cyclist. I, you know, I imagine he experienced it the same way, but I didn't experience what he was experiencing. I was completely shut off. It was really interesting. So yeah, we're, we're basically shut off from the impact we also have on others, like the nervous system of this guy over here, uh, the fact that we're splashing him. Um, the word automobile is our basic hint. It's been telling us for ages. It's about automatic mobility with little or no involvement from us. Um, yeah. That's the definition of automobile. Uh, and so somehow we think that this, you know, this new technology is going to somehow uh, be the solution. Um, I like the idea of electric cars, but I think it's also the everything stays the same approach to transportation. It's going to be the same and probably even worse planning. Uh, the same infrastructure, uh, sprawl, and all these different things that you uh, sometimes might associate with the automobile It'd still be replacing our bodies, our soundscapes, something that I write a lot about. It's a big thing for me, our sound environments, which is a natural resource of Vermont that is slowly it's being replaced by our hyper-motorized um, lifestyles. And I, I think one of the, the biggest things is that the number one problem with the electric car is that we think we've solved the problem, uh, which we haven't. Uh, if, it, if it's applied in a kind of sensible way, uh, I think it, you know, it, it definitely could be part of a solution. Um, but let's see if uh, uh, this, is, this, this electric car is not really what we think it is. What's the end game of it? It's the car bot. Okay, the car bot is a self-driving car. That is what's coming. You know, people are going crazy about the electric car. It's becoming, it's going to become the real automobile. Complete, uh, you know, dissociation from even driving, uh, let alone, you know, the, the landscape and uh, the social <laughs> and ecological habitats that, that we pass through. That's a great image. And so this, I, you know, it's too bad this couldn't play, but uh, this is from the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh. And actually, this is just the trailer. And he's running through the highway screaming, they're not human, they're not human. And people are just passing by him and barely even noticing he's there. And it says the ultimate science fiction classic, you know. And it's just like, we, in a way, we're heading into this classic science fiction idea of how to live on a planet by subverting against our senses and our, our very kind of connection to uh, the real world. I just love this clip, and at um, some point yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you. Yeah, yeah. We gotta get this. Yeah. Um, so that just brings us you know, to V-Bike. Uh, again, this idea of front, the frontier of connective transportation that connects us to communities, connects us to uh, the smiles on people's faces, connects us to the songs of birds. My son and I were going up you know, uh, to his uh, school every day, and now we're really starting to identify all the birds. Um, you just can't, and we, we watched all the, his you know, schoolmates going up, and they're confined in an automobile, and they're totally not getting this nourishing experience, and we, we feel really bad about that. So that's one of the reasons why I started V-Bike, is because I, I really started feeling guilty that uh, people weren't having the same wonderful experience we were having. Um, and so um, uh, V-Bike is uh, all about uh, really updating uh, the bike uh, for everyday transportation. One of the first things that happened is we got a contract with Go Vermont uh, to provide consultations for, for Vermonters. How do you get you know, a cargo bike? Do I have enough time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, all about electric assist. So people are like calling me, they're emailing me, and I'm getting people going, uh, saying things like, I don't want to be incarcerated anymore. I like that one. Somebody said they're being incarcerated. They're in a car all the time. Another person uh, exclaimed that they were feeling cardboard. And, and the thing of flat, you know, cardboard. But they were being bored by being in the automobile with, with their children. And they want out. And so we're getting a lot of people, particularly in the Brattleboro area where they're seeing us, but all over the state. So uh, we're going to start putting up a lot of the photos and examples of what people are doing. Um, and, and behind the V-Bike, you know, is really just really practical and theoretical core principles. I mean, these are rudimentary things that I think are really important. Um, again, it's about, you know, engaging our bodies, uh, being socially connected, 
e ecologically attuned, uh, aware and mindful of how we're using our technologies. Uh, I don't know how I, why I slipped this slide in, but it's not got it there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, if you go to the V-Bike website, um, you'll find uh, all kinds of uh, information about um, bikes for households, for commuters, for seniors, the history of cargo bikes, all about electric assist technologies. Um, uh, if you uh, go to the um, Go Vermont website, you'll actually find a lot of similar information with a really nice video uh, that covers a lot of that. Um, and uh, you'll also find out about the consultations that we do. There's a consultation I did with a couple in, uh, in uh, Brattleboro. I can do it in person. I can do it over the phone. People come over and they actually try out the bikes. There's all kinds of ways of doing it. We've got uh, just in the past uh, three weeks, there's been about, uh, about three people in Brattleboro alone that have bought cargo bikes and are getting the electric assist options on it. Once I think we hit about 15 people in the area, I think the flywheel is going to start spinning. Um, but then I have other people in the state that have, uh, are doing the same thing. So uh, The other thing is that we've got uh, low interest loans. We work with the Vermont State Employees Credit Union to get low interest loans uh, going so that people can afford these things because, you know, electric assist technology, putting on your bike is going to cost extra. If you're going to get a cargo bike, yes, you're going to be spending somewhere between $1,500 all the way. You can, you, know, you can go up to $6,000 depending on what you want to get. Um, we're constantly researching uh, low cost ways to do this, but the credit union has been great in offering these low interest uh, V green loans so that you can get on your bike, maybe uh, we'll get actually an ELF here in Vermont. Uh, hopefully V-Bike will, will be purchasing yeah. an ELF. Um, we're also uh, uh, starting to work with businesses like the co-ops, like uh, Montpelier Co-op is interested in getting a small fleet of cargo bikes and we're looking to do a project with the uh, Brattleboro Co-op to do a pilot project of doing deliveries for a month to people that are housebound. Uh, so uh, really we're starting to work with uh, businesses, see how or they, office bound. Yeah, yeah, office yeah. Bound. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. There's a mobile library in Middlebury. Yeah, 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 yeah. So something like that. There are yeah. a number of mobile libraries that use uh, cargo bikes. So mm -hmm. yeah, it would be really interesting and inspirational to see that. We've gotten a lot of press uh, over the past year. Um, uh, a few more new articles about, uh, in fact, we, we won uh, the notable project of the year award at the Vermont uh, right. Walk Bike Summit. Uh, just this past April, so that was really nice. Uh, but a large part of our work is about updating bike shops, you know, getting them to become relevant to what we're supposed to be doing, getting them out of the toy business, moving them towards getting, moving people, ma making them almost like, well, almost like transportation hubs, transportation centers where you can learn and uh, outfit your bike so you can really start moving yourself around the world in this way. Uh, this is a shop I visited in Berkeley. I had to go back to Berkeley. Uh, and um, I started a cargo uh, delivery service in Berkeley years ago. And we were looking at uh, ha uh, switching our office to a location. Turned out exactly this location where now a bike shop is open. The whole center of the whole uh, bike shop is all about cargo bikes and electric assist bikes. <laughs> you planted a seed and it grew. <laughs> and here's a, couple, here's a family that were, they were coming in to get their bike uh, bike checkup, uh, uh, two kids, mom, and here's a, this one has a bionic electric assist unit on it. Dave, how long does it take to get trained to be able to, like, do the, the, the maintenance on a bike, you know, uh, is there a whole... For, for, for a store or for, for a... a store, yeah. Um, uh, it's becoming more turnkey now, you know, it's a okay. lot, lot, lot easier yeah. for, um, for uh, stores to get involved in this uh, because the technology is becoming simpler. Yeah. It used to be really complex. Now it's pretty, becoming more straightforward. And so we've got both Brattleboro bike shops set up and they're starting to do it. They're, you know, uh, actually uh, Burroughs uh, Specialized Sports just sold out of their, all their Yuba cargo bikes. Oh, so yeah. now they have to get a whole bunch more. Uh, Both of them uh, have uh, electric assist conversion kits that they're selling. Uh, right. And so, yeah, it's really starting to happen. Uh, yeah, the, the bar is lowered considerably. Yeah, Super. yeah. But it does take some, you know, a lot yeah. of shops are nervous about it. Well, yeah. they're large as well. They take yeah. more real estate in the store. Yeah, yeah, the car um, bikes too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, again, V-Bike, um, we have a fleet of bikes now that we, uh, yeah. Someone wants to consult with you. Do we find you through the V-Bike 
website? Yeah, well, I'll give you a card. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, the V-Bike well. website. Yeah, there's a form you can just fill out on there, and we, we try and get back to people as soon as possible. And yeah, uh, that's our, our thing. We get paid to actually help people get into this next, you know, this bike revolution. You know, why not? If there's a revolution happening, you're not taking part in it, you know. Mm -hmm. what, what good is that? Uh, so uh, we've got the fleet. Uh, it's a growing fleet. We're hoping that, you know, next year you'll see like, an, like three elves in there. Actually, I think it's elves. I don't think we elves. see elves. elves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, we've got the spicy curry over here that you'll see out in the, uh, the uh, gym and uh, a bunch of other cargo bikes uh, that people are trying out in Brattleboro because we're Brattleboro based. But we're starting to bring these things around. Uh, we've got some really great uh, industry sponsors uh, and more coming online, uh, donating products to us. Like uh, this company called Barmits, uh, they make these like gloves that fit onto your handlebars. So in the winter, you know, that's what yeah. freezes first. Yeah. Bar mitts are great. We, I've been using them for five years and they keep your hands warm, uh, extend your season or ride throughout the whole year like, like we do. Um, and uh, in the end, this is really about rehumanizing our, our city streets or our, our town streets, uh, bringing back more of a human presence, bringing back a human scale uh, to where we live. Um, some people have complained that she's not wearing a helmet, but mm -hmm. that's up to her. I think. So, you know, walking, of course, is part of that. Uh, but the more we populate our streets, just, you know, I think there's going to be a greater economic vitality, but also just a greater feel to the communities that we live in. And, um, yeah, and just, um, yeah, just kind of in review, you know, biking, bikes and, and, and bike transportation and, and pedestrians are basically the indicator species for healthy communities. Uh, it's also about attracting younger families for economic vitality in our uh, cities and towns. Again, we have got the second oldest population in the U.S. If we want to stay with the 1950s kind of uh, idea of transportation, we're going to uh, suffer, I think, economically. Um, uh, the ultimate hybrid, you know, using our bodies in e-assist, it's a really great tool for local living, and it's really about showing up in a way that I think we need to in, in this particular time, this particular period that we live in. Excellent yeah. job. Um, I think what we'll do is uh, take a break and let the other session come back in, and then we can all go outside and try out. Um, one, yeah, let's bring the bikes outside. Bikes. Yeah, yeah, um, we've got a great uh, little circle over here. So, to around. Uh, Mary Claire, Dave, yeah, yeah. Deb. We're all happy to be here, and thank you very much. Hi, I'm Mary Claire Krogan from Edison County Transit Resources. And I'm going to show you today how easy it is to um, bring your bike with you for your, your bus commute. Um, for no extra charge, you can extend the range of your bike commute. Just Load it up on the rack with the front wheel facing the buck. Load the buck out, go over the tire to the highest point on the tire. Remove any loose articles such as water bottles or jackets or anything you have. And that's it. You can see I did that in less than one minute. You're on your way. And after your commute, just tell the bus driver that you're taking your bus off, your bike off, excuse me. Replace the truck. Remove your bike. If there are no other bikes, stow the rack by squeezing the handle. And you're on your way. Thank you so much for tuning in today.